The Language of Quran, Easier Than English, Lesson 8. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lesson number 8. Alhamdulillah, all the theory that we have been learning so far from lesson number 1 all the way to the pre previous lesson, lesson number 7, we are going to see now the practical implementation in particular of the I'rab of, in particular of Jar. Now there are certain particles, huruf in Arabic, that force the ism that come after it to be majroor or in jar and they're called huruf of jar and there are 17 of them in the language 11 of them are used in the quran they plus uh, the ism that comes after they form what's called the murakkab jari and this is what we're going to learn so these two lessons lesson number eight and nine are all about everything that you need to know to understand the murakkab jari that are used in the Quran. So insha'Allah ta'ala in lesson number eight we are going to deal with the first five ba, ta, kaf, lam, wa and in lesson number nine we're going to do min, fi, an, ala, hatta, ila and they form the murakkab jari which I've mentioned many times to you before are used in the Quran around 13,000 times. That means you'll see at least one of them in every line of Quran. Along with that, they also attach to pronouns. And this is something new completely for us. So far, we've been dealing with the detached pronouns. Now, inshallah ta'ala, from this lesson onwards, we're going to start looking at attached pronouns. So let's begin with the blessed name of Allah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and making the dua, Rabbi Yassir. وَلَا تُعَسِّرْ وَتَمِّمْ بِالْخَيْرِ Oh my Rabb, make it easy and not difficult and help me complete this task with goodness. In the first introductory session, I introduced you to the mapping of Arabic. And here we mapped out the key learning elements or the key milestones we're going to see in our journey. Alhamdulillah, so far we have been looking at some detail at the ism, one of the three types of words. Of course, I did mention verbs. We've done only few examples, but we will be dealing with them in detail in book two. Here, we're going to introduce now for the first set of huruf or harf, which is a particle. These are very short words. Now, these combined together make our constructs. And alhamdulillah, so far, you are familiar with the basic rules of Jumla ismiya, which is called a nominal sentence, begins with an ism and has two parts, Mubtada and Khabar. Also, Alhamdulillah, we have stole, already start, started looking at the, the descriptive phrase, Burakab Tawsifi, from lesson number two. And from lesson number one, we started looking at the uh, sentences as well. Anyhow, the other phrases that are remaining, we are picking the most important one up, which is now the Murakkab Jari, that is going to be used in the Quran around 12, 13,000 times. And inshallah, all of them we will pick up throughout the lessons that are forthcoming. So we're making very, very good progress in our milestones. Inshallah, ta'ala, keep a note of this map. Uh, it will help you, inshallah, plan your study journey. So what is a prepositional phrase, murakkab jari? We've already used this sentence before. If you recall, salam tu ala imamin, which means I gave salam to an imam. Or salam tu ala al-imami, I gave salam to the imam. And I mentioned to you many, many times that whenever an ism comes after a word like ala, it changes the arab of that word to jar. And I hope inshallah ta'ala by now, I do not need to explain those two points to you. So the harf of jar, which is ala, one of them, it converts the ism into jar or makes it become majroor and which you can see in the two examples. So these two sentences you are familiar with. So this part of the construct in Arabic, this part, uh, grammatically speaking, is called your murakkab jari. And if you again remember what I mentioned about the, uh, in the mapping, the two or more words that come together to give us some meaning, though the meaning is not complete, a sentence, i.e. not a sentence, it can be called a phrase. So this is your murakkab jari, i.e. a construct made up uh, harf of jar and ism majroor that follows afterwards. And this is what is meant by murakkab jari. So you've seen some of them. Now let's take a look at the details of how they work. So the prepositional phrase is very, very commonly used in the Quran. Not only that, in Hadith or in any Arabic literature, you'll find them just like in English, words like on or in, uh, about these kinds of words are very common 
in the language and you find them in any book thousands and thousands of times they used and they're very very powerful what do they do they link things together they even change the meaning of verbs so they're very very powerful very very important in uh, sentences so these are in arabic one set of particles we're looking at and these are special and there are 17 of them in the language and they are ba ta kaf lam wa منذ مذ خلا رب حاشا من عدا في عن على حتى إلى. Now only the highlighted ones have been used in the Quran. Some of them are very rare. Of course, you will find them in literature, in hadith, and so on. But in the Quran, we've only they they we will only find the highlighted eleven. The highlighted eleven. So we're going to start with min, which is the most commonly used word in the Quran. Almost. As you can see here, 3,226 times used in the Quran. So we're going to use that one to learn. And then we will look at all of them that are used in the Quran in some detail. So only note 11 of them we need to learn. And inshallah, you'll find them very, very easy, especially if you've done the previous lessons. This lesson should be very, very easy for you as it is a revision of most of the things that we have learned. The only thing we're going to now master is how to put an ism into Jar or how to, how to make it majroor. So take an example here. I have two words, min baitin. So you can see min here and baitin. Now min is your harf of jar, harf of jar, and baitin is called your ism majroor, the ism that is in jar. That's all it literally it means. And these two combined together make our murakkab jari. So when I say murakkab jari, I mean these two things combined together. It's very important to note the following point. There is nothing allowed to come in between these two. So they'll always be next to each other. Min and the harf, uh, the ism that comes after or any of the harf, fi, an, ala, ba, ta, kaf, lam, or whatever it is, it will be and the ism will be next to it. So they're always together. And it is these two coming together, they will make your murakkab jari. So please note that, the very important point. And the ism after that will always be, always, always be jar. There is no exception to this. So whenever harf of jar comes, the ism after will be majroor or in jar status. So in the first example, we have from a house. And now the second example, we have from the house. The, of course, has al. Al has taken away the tanween, so you end up with a single haraka. And then we have min, and of course, harf of jar. And then we have our ism majroor, coming after, combined together, they make our murakkab jari. Now, what is important here to note is that min is now changed. Min is now changed to what we have here on the screen. You can see from a sukun to a fatha. Why? Because of the meeting of two sukuns. In Arabic, when two sukuns meet, you cannot read. So in order to help that, we have the additional helping vowel. So from mina, min, it becomes mina. So exactly the same word, please don't worry about it. It is for phonetic reasons. So min al bayti from the house. Both of them are murakkab jari. Now with murakkab jari, it doesn't matter what the ism is. It could be definite, indefinite, masculine, feminine, singular, dual, plural. But it is arab has to be jar. That is the most important point for you to note. So that is in a summary all that you need to know about murakkab jari now we're going to look at that with detailed examples the word for allah can be in three different arab as we can see rafa nasab and jar allahu allaha allahi you can see all three there on the screen when min comes in front it will be min and then the word allahu now of course it is rafa it needs to be converted to jar it will become min allahi of course you know now why the fatha is there it is to help to read because the meeting of two sukuns so min allahi used used in the quran 85 times so even that simple construct that we just learned now it has been used in the quran 85 times 85 times so min allahi make a note of this one inshallah and it is again a very simple way of illustrating the murakkab jari On the screen now you have examples of words 
before it is min, I put them all in rafa. So you have hamidun, mu'minun, al-mu'allimatu, and kutubun. As you will note from now, alhamdulillah, you should be able to recognize which one is a broken plural, which one is feminine, uh, which one is definite, which one is indefinite, etc., etc. But now what I'd like you to do is put them with min to get the translation which you can see in the box here. So I want you to say from Hamid, from a believer, from the teachers, bracket feminine, and of course from books. So you can see all of them on the screen. I'd like you to pause the video and complete the task before continuing. I hope you have done it. Let's go through the answers. Min, and after the we have Hamidun. It has to be Jar. So it becomes Min Hamidin. I hope you got that answer right. It is very easy, I hope, inshallah. Mu'minun means a believer. From a believer will be Min Mu'minin. Min Mu'minin. And then we have Al Mu'allimatu. Al Mu'allimatu. Min Al Mu'allimati. Min Al Mu'allimati. Kutubun, broken plural, put min in front from books. Min kutubin. Min kutubin. I hope this is easy and I hope now inshallah you can see why I took you through that journey where I wanted you to understand how different categories of ism, they express their Arab. Again, go back and look at the example of rice. Roll, Arab, and then we have category the type of ism it is and how it expresses this Arab. So here you can see all of them, they are in jar with either two fathas, two kasra, sorry, or a single kasra, which you can see here, insha'Allah. Next set I have here in front of you is Ibrahimu Khadijatu Masajidu Al Masajidu. So translation from Ibrahim, from Khadija, from mosques, from the mosques. Put men with them and form the Murakkab Jari for me, please. I'm not going to give you any more hints. Pause the video and don't come back until you've completed the task. So let's quickly go through the translation and the examples that we've given you earlier. Min Ibrahima. Please note, these are the words Ghairu Munsarif, partly declining. They do not take Tanween or Kasra in Jar. They express their era because their category being Ghairu Munsarif with U, A, A. So in Rafa, U, Nasab, A, Jar, A. So here we will say they're Majroor or Jar because of Min. Then we have Min Khadijata. Then we have min masajida, masajida. Why? None of them will take kasra in jar. In the next one, we have from the mosques. Now here, it's become min al masajidi. Why is a jidi now and it's not before? Because it is taken al. Remember in the previous lesson, I mentioned to you that a ghayru munsarif word can take a kasra when it can take al. Otherwise, no. So it basically loses its quality of being Ghairu Munsarif, behaves like Munsarif, so it takes a Kasra. That is the exception. And one of the exceptions, sec second exception it is when it is Mudaf. And we will look, that, look at that specific examples in lesson number 11. So I hope and pray you got them right. Again, if you've got them right or not, please do write them down again. This will help you remember the rules, practice the rules, recognize the rules when it comes to Quranic text. Now the next set we have Musa Hada Alladina admin to these words insha'Allah and from the translation from Musa from this from those who do not come back until you completed the task pause the video
So the answer for the first one from Musa, Min Musa, Min Musa. Next one, Min Hada. And the next one, Min al -ladheena. Min al -ladheena. very commonly used in the Quran. Min al from those who, from this, from Musa. Why? These words, their ending does not change whether they're in the Rafa, Nasab or Jar. So please note that inshallah, those three examples illustrating and another very important point that we've learned earlier. Next we have Mu'minani and I want you to translate from the two believers. Okay, then we have Talibatani from the two students. I hope you can recognize that is feminine uh, and is dual. And Al Kitabani from the two books. Where did you get this information from? From the two books. So, inshallah, do the same. Pause the video. Don't come back until you finished the exercise. Don't worry about getting things wrong. It's better for you to make a mistake and learn and then not to practice. So the first answer from the two believers, min mu'minaini. Remember, mu'minani, mu'minaini, mu'minaini, nasab and jar. If you remember, memorize the Muslim table, as I told you in lesson number four, you would not have this difficulty. Min mu'minaini, mu'minani, mu'minaini, nasab, mu'minaini, jar. It has to be jar in this case. Then we have two students, min talibataini. Again, I hope you got this right, inshallah, from the two books, minal kitabaini, not kitabani, kitabaini. It has to be jar. I hope, inshallah, these exercises are proving to be fruitful for you. Please continue doing them, and inshallah, ta'ala, through practice, you learn these very simple rules. Now we have from believers and then from the mushriks or polytheists. Please pause the video, complete the task. I think this one should be very easy, especially if you've memorized the Muslim table, then you know what correct endings it should have. Don't come back until you finish the task. So the answers are min mu'minina from the believers min al mushrikina from the idol worshippers or polytheists i hope inshallah ta'ala these two you have got Next to ayatun. Okay, it is the plural of ayah, singular ayatun. I hope you can see that sound feminine plural. And al mu'minatu. These are both in Rafa. Give me the correct version with the translation from the ayat and from the believers. Okay, let's quickly go through the answers. I hope you recognize that these are sound masculine, sound feminine plurals, sound feminine plurals. As it therefore, they express their Arab either as atun for rafa, atin for nasab, and atin for jar. So nasab and jar is the same. Therefore, when we put min, we have min ayatin, min ayatin. So please make a note of that, inshallah. It is jar in this case because of the harf of jar that precedes it. 
Then we have al added. So, so same thing with any tanwin word. The tanwin is removed. Al mu'minatu. When we say min, we get min al mu'minati. Is jar because of min. Otherwise, it could be nasab or jar. So min al mu'minati. Again, I hope and pray you did the exercise. You've written them down. Please rewrite them again. This will help you again learn and practice the rules. And next on the screen, I've already done it for you. Just wanted you to note these down, inshallah, to give you practice. These are the rare examples of special cases of words. You can see here, min wadin, from a valley. This is the special category mentioned in the previous lesson. And with al, it's min al wadi. And then with from a stick, min asan, min al asa, and min al huda. This is actually from the Quranic examples. So these are your special cases. And again, I have dealt with them in the previous lesson, but please do write these down. They will help you practically recall how they're used. And once you've done them a couple of times, you'll be able to recognize the few examples of words that have these special endings in the Quran. Attached pronouns. So far, alhamdulillah, in lesson number five, we went through the detached pronouns. We should know them now, alhamdulillah, if you memorize them in de detail, because I told you they're used in the Quran 1370 times. So they are huwa, huma, hum, hiya, huma, hunna, anta, antuma, antum, anti, antuma, antunna, ana, nahnu. So these have been used 1370 times. Now, most important thing to note about them is that they are always, always definite. I hope, inshallah ta'ala, this information is now imprinted in your hearts. They are always, always marfu'. This set, they're always marfu'. And they're fixed, they don't change. So whatever they are ending is this fixed, it's only rafa. So if we go back to our original discussion on the four properties, if you remember, we had four boxes. So in the first box, we had definiteness, gender, number, and arab. So as far as the definiteness is concerned, they're always definite. They're always rafa. But we have different ones to cater for masculine, feminine. We have also different ones to cater for singular, dual, and plural. Another extra thing that we have about these uh, sets is that we also have something called person. I Again, I went through all of this in detail with you in lesson number five. What do I mean person? Is when I'm talking about somebody that is the third person, when I'm talking to somebody that is the second person, when I'm talking, I'm the first person, or when I'm talking on behalf of a group, we are the first person. So again, we, we, we have that here, the first person, and these six are your second person, sorry, up to here, and all of these are your third person. So you have your third, second, and first person. I hope that's relatively easy for you now. I went through these already with you. But these are always, always rafa, always definite. So how and do we get the nasab and jar version? This is another set of pronouns and they are called attached pronouns. Please note that they are called attached pronouns. Why? They, they are never written separately. They always attach to the word that is before it. So they always come as a suffix. Please note that always a suffix at the end of a word. So again, let's go back to our four boxes. And they are always, always definite. All pronouns are always definite. But this set can be either nasab or jar. So the other ones are always rafa. This set never rafa, but they can be nasab or jar. Please note that point, inshallah, very, very important. And this will help you avoid confusion. Of course, definiteness is always there. In order for um, the three different persons we have here, 
okay, person. Exactly the same principle. We have third, second, and first. And that's an overview of them. Most important about attached pronouns, they are always written attached to something as a suffix. And that is why they're called attached pronouns. And they can be nasab or they can be jar. Of course, they're at, if they're attached to a harf of jar, they will be majroor. So there is no way of getting confused whether it's nasab or jar. So these are your 14 equivalent to your huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana nahnu. Please memorize them and make sure you're able to rewrite them from memory. Attached pronouns can come as a suffix, i.e. be attached to an ismun, fa'lun, or harfun. Ismun, a noun, fa'lun, a verb, harfun, a particle. We are, of course, going to see the huruf of jar, the particles of jar. They can attach to other types of particles, but when they attach to these, they will always be majroor. So the key points to note about them is that whenever they are attached to a harf of jar, harf of jar, please note harf of jar, and this is going to be covered in this lesson 7 and 8. We're going to cover them in lesson number 7 and lesson number 8. They will always be jar or majroor. Whenever they're attached to an ism, they will also be majroor. And this is covered inshallah ta'ala in lesson number 10 and lesson number 11. Whenever they get attached to a harf of nasab, we have got also harf of nasab, which we will see in lesson number 12 inshallah, sorry, lesson number 13. We will see, inshallah, they will be nasab or mansub. And whenever they're attached to a verb, which you will see in book two, they will be also be mansub. So that's all you need to know about them, even for advanced grammar. That's all you need to know about the attached pronouns. These are the four options that they have. And as I said, they cannot be anything but nasab or jar. We are going to now look at when they are jar by attaching them to the huruf of jar. So please note these basic bullet points they'll help you inshallah ta'ala avoid confusion in the future. So to form murakkab jari, we can do that with any ism. And of course, a, har a pronoun is also an ism in Arabic, and you should know that by now. So ha here I have the example we've seen before from Hamid. So I have here from Hamid, min Hamidin. That your jar and your ism majroor follows afterwards making the murakkab jari. But if I want to say min huwa from he, this is wrong in Arabic. In English, I need also it is wrong. I say from him. So I cannot use huwa. Why? Because huwa is a pronoun, yes, but it is always rafa. It is detached. It is always rafa. So it cannot come next to min. It has to be the attached version. So I use min hu. So please note that jar majroor. Murakkab Jari, exactly the same construct as Min Hamidin, from Hamid, from him, exactly the same, grammatically speaking. And of course, I have to use an attached pronoun, attached pronouns. So again, you can see, as I repeat, as I repeat many times to you, why they're attached, because they, are, they cannot be written on their own. They are now attached to the word Min in this example, Min Hu, from him. So this is your Murakkab Jari one on the right hand side with a ism and the one on the left hand side just above here is with a harf of jar again a murakkab jari so these are the two main types that you will see inshallah so the 14 attached pronouns i'm putting them in the table with the detached pronouns so you can see them detached you already know huwa huma hum the attached version is hu huma hum now, you may look here and say, that, well, the huma and the hum look the same. Yes, but there is a difference. The huma on the right-hand side and the hum, they are written separately, whereas the other version is always written as a suffix. So when you see them as a suffix, you know they're the attached version. So please make a note of that. So we have hu, huma, hum. For the here, we have ha, huma, Hunna. Again, the same principle applies. The purple ones are always as a suffix. So we have ha, huma, hunna. Ha, huma, hunna. Again, you can see the differences on the screen. Anta, antuma, antum. Their versions are ka, kuma, kum. Ka, kuma, kum. Again, you know the kum. Assalamu alaikum. That's your kum there attached to ala. We will see that in the next lesson. So ka, Kuma kum. And then of course we have K 
ki kuma kunna so ki kuma kunna ki kuma kunna ka kuma kum ki kuma kunna and for me it is e and for we na e na please do write it down at least once in next to each other and inshallah ta'ala you will become familiar with this and i cannot emphasize how important the attached pronouns are they are around 9000 times in the quran but more importantly the most important thing you need after learning arab in arabic to understand quranic text is actually pronouns so once you mastered the pronouns and you've started to learning arab that's it the ism is covered and inshallah ta'ala we are ready for verbs so these are the two most common and most important please take a few minutes to learn them well now we're going to attach them to min you're going to use this as your template inshallah we're going to go through this stuff in more detail as we go through each one but let's just quickly learn these as this will be the template from which we will develop the rest of our arabic ready minhu minhuma minhum minhu minhuma minhum and then we have minha minhuma minhunna so let's do the together six of them minhu minhuma minhum minha minhuma minhunna practice this in cycles of three insha'allah minka minkuma minkum minka minkuma minkum and then you have minki minkuma minkunna minki minkuma minkunna minka minkuma minkum minki minkuma minkunna and then minni minna minni minna all of them inshallah ta'ala do write them down if you write them down once practice loudly in cycles of three 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 separate them out throughout the day inshallah maybe after fajr after dhuhr and after maghrib or something like that whichever suits you the best and then write them once every day for a few days you'll memorize them forever and these min is used in the quran 3226 times most of the times you will see it with pronouns so please please take that time inshallah memorize these urgently so let's go one more time for practice minhu minhuma minhum minha minhuma minhunna minka minkuma minkum minki minkuma minkunna minni minna that's all you need to do to memorize this chart so what i'd like you to do now is add the attached version to what you see on the screen so i want the translation from him, from her, from you. I put in bracket whether it's masculine, singular, and etc. Please make sense of that yourself and make sure you do this exercise before continue. Pause the video. So from him will be min hu. I hope you got that one right. From her, min ha. Okay, well done. And from you would be masculine singular minka so of course it could be minka minkuma minkum minki minkuma minkunna but here i'm looking for masculine singular from you all antum version will be minkum minkum and from me minni minni so you can see here all of them alhamdulillah i hope you've done it i hope you practiced it please 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 don't neglect the practice Alhamdulillah, we reached the end of the video. I'm going to split it into two like I've done with the others because otherwise the lesson will be too long for you. But I'm sure you can pause if you find it long and come back to it again and again, inshallah ta'ala. So in the second part, we will continue and conclude our lesson number eight where we look at examples of huruf of jar. And the ones we're going to look at is ba, ta, kaf, lam, and wa. The rest we will cover in lesson number nine. Please note what I've done in the first part of the video, gone through all the theory. The same rule applies with any of the huruf of jar. They will make the ism afterwards majroor. So if you learn and practice min, the rest will be relatively easy. All I'm going to do is pick the specific, specific features of each one, some basic translation, and then inshallah ta'ala, go into practicing them again. 
May Allah reward you and bless you for watching the video. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your support and your du'as and your encouragement and all the positive messages I'm getting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and many of you are coming forward with your support. If you want to support this channel, if you want to support us in covering our costs in produce, producing these videos and producing more courses and lessons, the details are in the description. Kindly support us as much as you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with the very best in this world and in the hereafter. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.